I'm looking very much cottagecore today, and like, it's not my usual aesthetic, but I'm very obsessed with it. Like, if the protagonist of a story went and killed someone, I'm not necessarily gonna go out and commit murder, am I? I mean, if this book has cannibalism in, you know, I've read stories with cannibalism in before. I'm prepared. I'm ready. Hey besties, it's Joel, and today I'm going to be going over the 22 books that I'm anticipating for 2022. I hope you're all doing well and that you're looking after yourselves. I've certainly been doing that, as you've noticed. It's been two weeks since I've uploaded. I had a pretty rough case of tonsillitis, but with some much needed rest and just rejuvenation, I'm back and recording. And this is basically my very first video that I'm recording for 2022, which is very exciting. I just can't wait to see what this year brings in terms of content, but if you've yet to take that drink of water, please do so. We must remain well and hydrated. I have a mug of tea. So if you want to grab a beverage of your choice as well, that's absolutely welcome. If you've yet to check out my Instagram nor my Twitter, I would highly recommend you go check those out as well because I post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. And yeah, I'm just very excited to go over these 22 books that I'm really anticipating. Instead of trying to do half of the year and then forget to do the other half like I did last year, I'm just gonna cover the entire year in one go. And then there's other books that I am anticipating, but I'll probably mention them ad hoc throughout the year as they're coming closer to release. But these are the ones that I'm kind of like, ooh, I'm really, really wanting to read these right away. It was definitely really hard to narrow down this list, but I think I have a really strong list here. But before we get into the list of the 22 books, I do have a very quick message from the sponsor of today's video, and so I'm going to throw it over to Sponsor Joel in order to tell you all about that. Hey besties, I'd like to thank GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring today's video. Like hanging out the middleman, GlassesUSA.com provides prescription glasses up to 70% off retail prices, which you can order from the comfort of your own home. They offer over 4,000 styles of eyeglasses and sunglasses as well, from in-house brands to designer brands as well. It's such a wide range that you can actually find different glasses of different specialities like sports glasses or even kids glasses as well. Plus you can add a prescription lens onto any frame of glasses or sunglasses. And also GlassUSA.com offers blue light blocking on any of their lenses which is what I primarily use them for. So I was able to select three pairs from GlassUSA.com, one pair for me and then two pairs that I'm going to give as gifts to some of my friends. The ones that you're seeing me wearing right now are the Ototo Alceo glasses. These just look really amazing. I love the way these look. The ones that I got for myself are the Thackeray. I think that these ones, they're a bit smaller. I really like them. Uh, the blue light blocking really helps with uh, long hours at the computer as well. And then the final lenses that I got for another one of my friends is the Muse Artur lenses. He really wanted a pair of thick rimmed glasses, so I decided to get those for him. He is gonna love these. Plus, these glasses were packaged really well and arrived very neatly and safe. And so a complete pair of glasses with frame and lenses starts at only $30. And so if that sounds great to you, I'll have a link in my description which you can use to browse the selection that GlassesUSA.com offers. And now let's see which books I'm most anticipating for this upcoming year. Okay, so we have 11 months worth of books because for some reason I'm not anticipating any books in December, but we have 11 months worth of books to go through. And so let us start off in January. And so on the 11th of January, which has already passed by now, but released on the 11th of January was Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan. This one I do have an arc of and one that I will be getting getting to very soon this month, but it's one of my most anticipated reads for the year because I just loved the description of it, and it's inspired by the Chinese moon goddess Chang'e, as we've seen through Netflix's Over the Moon as well. There's this, this, this kind of like theme that I'm like wanting to explore, and I really love stories that interact with goddesses and gods from other mythologies, and so I'm really excited to read this. And going off what I have written down on here, it's a fantasy inspired by the legend of Chang'e, the Chinese moon goddess, in which a young woman's quest to free her mother pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm. And that just sounds amazing. When treachery looms and forbidden magic threatens the kingdom, Jingying must challenge the ruthless celestial emperor for her dream, striking a dangerous bargain in which she is torn between losing all she loves or plunging the realm into chaos. And, you know, 
I like end of the world stories are like very much done in fantasy a lot but like when you can like twist it and turn it into something new I'm fully for it and that just sounds amazing plus the covers are gorgeous like wow the US cover was done by Kuri Huang and the UK cover was done by Jason Chong and they're quite similar in a sense which is really good for a UK and a US cover but I think I I don't know which one I prefer but I'm really a massive fan of both of them the next book that I'm then anticipating which releases on the 25th of January is The Red Palace by Jun He. Jun He is like one of my favorite historical fiction writers. Like I read Silence of the Bones in 2020. I completely fell in love with it. But this one is another historical Korean fiction story which follows like court intrigue and politics and basically it's like the crown prince could be the murderer but like that's kind of treasonous if you like want to think about that. I'm really excited for it because I'm, I really really want to get back into watching more historical Korean dramas dramas like Kingdom was probably like the last proper historical Korean drama I watched although that did have a zombie twist. There's one that I really want to watch at the moment that's like a cross-dressing one where I think like Princess has to become the crown prince because he's killed and like she's falling in love with her childhood best friend or whatever and that just really sounds amazing to me and so that's something that I do want to watch but anyway The Red Palace takes place in Joseon 1758. Through hard work and study 18 year old illegitimate daughter Hyun has earned a position as a palace nurse but Hyun is suddenly thrust into the the dark and dangerous world of court politics. And when someone murders four women in a night, the evidence points towards the crown prince. And Yo Jin, a young police inspector, works with Hyun in order to find the actual killer. They may have to look into the darkest corners of the royal household to find the deadly secrets behind the bloodshed. And so I'm very excited for it. I think it's gonna be amazing. And if it's anything like The Silence of the Bones, I'm really excited for it. And also I still need to read The Forest of Soul and Girls by Jun Ho as well, but I think I'm gonna marathon it alongside the Red Palace. So those are basically the two books that I'm anticipating for January. Now let us move on to February, which I'm only anticipating one book, and it releases on February 8th, and it is Ophelia After All by Raquel Marie. And she recently did an unboxing of like the finished hardcovers for this, and I'm so happy for her. Raquel is one of my dear friends. I just, I can't wait to see her book release. Ophelia After All basically follows Ophelia and as her secrets begin to unravel, she must make a decision between clinging to the fantasy version of herself that she's always imagined or appending everyone's expectations to discover who she really is after all. This basically gives me vibes of like Encanto, which recently came out on Disney Plus where we have the Madrigal family and Mirabelle, who's like non-magical, basically discovering like her own power and who she is. I think this kind of gives me like similar vibes and also something quite relatable as well because especially as like a queer person of color there's so much like expectation of you of like who you should be and you kind of have to learn to like defy people's expectations and defy people's like preconceived notions of you in order to present like who you are as a person um like I just think it's pretty cool that this book is coming out I'm really exciting I think Raquel also like made sure to note that this isn't a young adult romance it's a young adult contemporary I'm really looking forward to reading Ophelia's journey and seeing what happens and plus the name Ophelia chef's kiss amazing although hopefully it has no relevance to like hamlet whatsoever because um yeah and then we go on to march and i'm anticipating three books and the first one which releases on march 1st is gallant by v.e schwab which i know i like v.e schwab's books like i read the shades of magic trilogy and ended up quite liking it apart from like a few things and then i liked adi larue but had a few criticisms but everyone seems to think i hate adi larue for some reason because i gave it three stars on goodreads even though three stars is a very valid rating for something that you enjoyed. I'm quite excited to read Gallant because it has a really intriguing like plot to it and I feel like this could be the book that I really love from V.E. Schwab although I still haven't read Vicious and Vengeful yet and I, apparently I really like that as well. But Gallant in and of itself is The Secret Garden meets Crimson Peak both of which I really really like and so I'm really excited to see how it unravels further in V.E. Schwab's story and it's basically following a young woman that's being beckoned by both good and evil and there's like demons behind locked doors and tackling those demons and I'm very excited for it. I think it's gonna be really cool. I really am obsessed with the cover as well and the like the shape of the book because I think the book's gonna be a squarish book instead of like the normal size. But yeah, I'm very very excited to read Gallant. But then we move on to March 8th where Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft releases. Oh, 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 this one I'm really excited for because I think it's just gonna be pretty cool. I think the premise of it was really awesome and it basically follows Margaret Welty who spots the legendary 
Valhalla, which is like a mythical, legendary creature. And she knows soon the Half Moon Hunt will begin. And basically, whoever's able to kill this Hala will basically earn fame, riches, and unlock an ancient secret. If Margaret's able to win the hunt, it may bring her mother home. And so I'm intrigued by it. I think it's going to be quite an interesting tale, and I'm excited to see what happens. And then on March 29th, Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May releases. And my friend Teresa basically described this as a sapphic Gatsby, but with witches. And I immediately want to read this. It basically follows the aftermath of World War One, where a naive woman is swept into the glittering world filled with the dark magic, romance, and murder. I think it's going to give me feels that I got from a book that I'll be mentioning later, A Marvelous Light by Freya Mask. I literally read this. I finished it a few days ago. I will be talking about this book later. But yeah, I'm really excited by that premise and it's going to be really exciting. But yeah, now we move on to April and April has like some really cool books ahead of it. And so on April 5th releases Portrait of a Thief by Grace Dealey. And this one I am really highly anticipating because it's Ocean's Eleven basically meets the farewell. And I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be like, amazing. I'm really, really in the need for like a heist novel and I really want to do some more research on heist novels purely because there's this one thing that I want to write. I really want to like read this. I re like, it just sounds so amazing. Plus the cover! I love the simplicity of it. I cannot wait to read it. And the way this basically tackles like the true story of Chinese art vanishing from like Western museums and talks about like diaspora, the colonization of art and the complexity of the Chinese American identity. Um, yes. Basically, yes, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, I need it now. I need it now. Because do you just know when, like, you hear about a book and then it stays in your head for a long time and then you can't, like, every so often you're just reminded that this book is coming out? That's me in Portrait of a Thief. I've been doing, like, research on trying to find cover artists and stuff, but a lot of, like, people just don't say who their cover artists are. And so I think I have to wait until, like, the books come out to find, like, the way they're properly credited, which kind of sucks because I want to be able to, like, credit the cover artists all the time, but it's hard to find them when like they're just not cr properly credited. I think Goodreads needs to have an option where they have the cover artist like displayed or even the story graph could like implement that because then it would make my job easier trying to find cover artists. The next book releases on April 19th is Sophie and the Bone Song by Adrienne Tooley and basically this one I don't know what it was about this one but it, I just read the synopsis and I was like yes and the cover as well was really well done. Sophie and the Bone Song it's amazing. Basically it's it follows Sophie, who works to reclaim her rightful place as a music, one of five musicians in the country licensed to compose and perform original songs. And basically because of this, she's forced to face the dark secrets of her past and the magic that she's tried so hard to avoid. This is all while trying not to fall for the girl who stole her future. And you know, you know me and sapphic stories, I am a massive fan of them. I literally gobble that shit up like it's nobody's business. And so I'm very excited for this. I think it's just gonna be amazing. It just kind of gives me such good vibes. I think this year is literally gonna be the year of the sapphics for me because I have like a few different sapphic stories that I'm highly anticipating and so we'll see what happens. Although if you do want sapphic book recs at the moment, Teresa who I mentioned earlier who mentioned about the sapphic Gatsby, she has a lot of videos on a sapphic book recommendations so I'll have a link down below so you can go check her out. And then the next book that I'm then anticipating is the sequel to Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. This is Fever Star. So basically, Fever Star will basically follow the consequences faced by the characters in Black Sun. I'm highly anticipating it. Really looking forward to seeing how everything continues after the finale to Black Sun. Like, that shit was uh, chaotic, to say the least. I'm really excited to see how my girl Jala, like, continues. Seeing, like, Nara and Serapio and all of the rest of them, just like, how that is gonna go on. But, um, yeah, let us discuss the cover. It's a choice, to say the least. I'm not a particular fan of this cover, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, but it definitely could have been better. Like, I don't know how we went from this to this. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. So 
Yeah. Now we move on to May, and May is probably like the biggest month for me, and all of these books release on the same day. So I'm probably gonna have that massive transaction come out of my bank account, but anyways. So the first book that releases on May 3rd that I'm really anticipating is Book of Night by Holly Black. I like Holly Black, I still need to like properly read the Folk of the Air series, but this is her like adult debut, and I'm really excited for it. I think it's gonna be amazing, especially given like the synopsis of it, and like the intrigue that I I have towards it. I am obsessed with the cover. And basically, this follows Charlie, who's determined to survive after a terrible figure from her past returns. And so she throws herself into a maelstrom of secrets and murder, setting her against a cast of doppelgangers, mercurial billionaires, shadow thieves, and her own sister, all desperate to control the magic of the shadows. And so I'm really intrigued by this, like, premise. It doesn't give a lot, but it gives enough for me to be interested. And I just am looking forward to seeing what Book of Night delivers. I really like Holly Black's writing. I think the way that she does her descriptions is beautiful. And so I'm really excited to see like what she presents in an adult fiction novel. The next book that then releases on May 3rd is Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor by Jiren Zhao. This one is done by the author of Iron Widow, but this is her middle grade fantasy debut. And this is basically Percy Jackson meets Tristan Strong in a middle grade contemporary fantasy. And this follows a young boy as he journeys across China to seal the underworld and keep the mortal realm safe. And so I'm really excited to see how this is done. I still need to read Iron Widow by Zhang Zhao, but I've heard nothing but good things, and so I'm really excited by it. Next, on May 3rd, we have a romance that I'm anticipating, and that is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This one just really intrigued me from the synopsis, and I know, like, I think one or two of my friends have already read this via ARCs and enjoyed it. I need to double check that. It could be another book that I'm thinking of, but I think it was Book Lovers that they said they enjoyed. This basically follows Nora Stevens, who's a literary agent, and and then Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor. They're thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences that no editor would allow through these events of like being thrown together. They'll carefully unravel the crafted stories that they've made about themselves and maybe, just maybe, get together. I really want to read more stories taking place within a literary setting, like The Hating Game is another one that I need to read. It's one of Noelle's favourite books, and so that takes place within, like, a publishing setting as well. And so I think it'd be really interesting to, like, read more novels in this kind of setting, especially since, like, you know, I'm a bookish person. I'm really intrigued by it, and I think it'd be really cool. The next book that released on May 3rd that I'm anticipating is I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. I love Red, White, and Royal Blue, and also One Last Stop, and so I'm really excited for Shara Wheeler as well. I think this one being Case McQuiston's YA debut is amazing. Like, I'm really excited to see what they deliver in this new age category, but also I think the premise of Shara Wheeler is just great as well. It basically follows Chloe Green, who's kissed by Shara Wheeler, who's her rival, and then Shara just disappears. And then, you know, through a series of small coincidences and forming unlikely alliances, Chloe basically starts to unravel the secrets of her small town and discovers there's more to it than she initially thought. And yeah, I'm really excited for it. I think the cover, again, is stunning. I just want to read it right now, and I think it's just going to deliver such a rich tale. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what McQuiston delivers in this novel. In June now, and both of these books release on June 7th, and the first one is We All Fall Down by Rose Val. I haven't read What Big Teeth yet, but my friends Asia and Joelle and Sissy really, really love What Big Teeth, and I really need to get on that ASAP. We All Fall Down, basically gives me the dark academia vibes and I, oh, the cover, the cover by Corey Brickley. Gorgeous, stunning, amazing. Like one of my favorite covers of 2022. And this basically follows like four young queer people as they start to unravel a magical conspiracy after a murder that rocks all of their worlds, not knowing that they've been selected to participate in like an age old drama that revives the flow of magic through like society. And amazing, amazing. This is just such a good, it's going to feed me. And the cover just gives the Dark Academia vibes. This whole thing gives me Dark Academia vibes. Like I'll be talking about Dark Academia later with another book, but I need this now because this is like probably, I would say it's like my second most anticipated book of the year, maybe third. We'll get to my first one later. Yeah, this is definitely on like the top five. And then the other book that I'm highly anticipating that releases on June 7th is Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. This one just sounds amazing. It is basically a gothic retelling of the Juniper tree and it's basically set in the same world as her other novel, Wolf and the Woodsman. And it basically follows a young witch who seeks to discover her identity and, and escape the dominant 
combination of her wizard father. I'm just really excited by it. The cover of Juniper and Thorn is gorgeous, like ungodly gorgeous, and I cannot wait to read it. I have heard just resounding things about Ava Reed's writing, and I do need to read The Wolf and the Woodsman. I, I think I'll wait until I get Juniper and Thorn and then marathon the both together, because then I'll stay within that Ava Reed reading mood. <laughs> Ava reading mood, you know? And then we get on to July, in which we have both books releasing on July 26th. And so the very first book that I'm anticipating is Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. I like the cover for this. It's not one of my favorite covers, but the cover just looks pretty. It follows a morally gray witch, a cursed prince, and a prophecy that ignites their fate. Just by that, I'm kind of intrigued by it. But then as I was like reading more of the synopsis, like following this witch that could basically heighten in her position in the world or curse everyone to damnation. This young witch has to basically unravel the web of deceit and lies within her kingdom or basically risk destroying everything. It just, it sounds really great and I'm really intrigued by it. It just sounds really good, you know? I especially love this like rise of morally gray characters within fiction because especially from a protagonist lens, I think like we've grown so accustomed to having protagonists having the utmost sense of morality that we've kind of grown into this toxic mindset that protagonists can't do anything wrong and that if they do something wrong they're immediately not a, like a good protagonist or like the book should be rated lower when actually we need to accept the protagonists are flawed people and that they need to actually explore their flaws and sometimes they'll make decisions that you may personally not like but is the best decision for them at the current time. Yes I think for younger audiences probably you might want that but like for young adult and adult I think we have a good enough sense of a moral compass to know that our decisions won't be influenced by our protagonists. Like, if the protagonist of a story went and killed someone, I'm not necessarily going to go out and commit murder, am I? So that's on that. But speaking of like morally grey people, the next book that I'm anticipating in July is The Book of Gothel by Mary McMine. And this one I found whilst I was going through Goodreads looking for books in 2022 and then I read the synopsis of this and saw the cover of this and was like, okay, this is going on the list. Just is a prequel to Rapunzel, you know? And it's told from her own perspective. The Book of Gothel is a lush historical retelling filled with dark magic, crumbling towers, mysterious worlds, and evil princes. And I'm just really excited about this because it basically follows Hailwise who basically goes to the woods and a wise woman takes her under her wing and she discovers a world of like dark and mysterious magic and I'm just really excited to read Hailwise's story and how she becomes Gothel and just seeing if it, this is going to kind of give like the story of like the Maleficent kind of feel to it like redefining the tale essentially like we could get that Maleficent twist to it but yeah no it sounds really cool and I'm really excited for it. Now we get on to August and on August 9th releases The Book Eaters by Sunny Dean and this one I immediately gravitated towards because of like the familial like feelings of this story and it's a contemporary fantasy as well which we don't get a lot of in fiction and I'm really excited to read more contemporary fantasy because I would love to write a contemporary fantasy someday but basically The Book Eaters is a story about motherhood, sacrifice and hope, of queer identity and learning to accept who you are, of gilded lies and the dangers of believing in narratives that others create for you and just from that I'm very very excited for it because again like I mentioned earlier as like a queer person and a person of colour you're kind of used to having these narratives written about you, these preconceived notions that people already think of you before even meeting you, and I'm glad that we're having stories that tackle this theme and like unraveling these stories and rewriting them from our own perspective, rewriting our own narratives because you know we can't all erase ourselves from the narrative like Eliza did in Hamilton, but we can change the role we play in them, and I'm very excited to see like the book eaters and see what story it presents, especially as we follow Devon who basically eats books like other book eater women is carefully raised on a curated diet of fairy tales and cautionary stories. But real life doesn't always come with happy endings, as Devon learns her son is born with a rare and darkened kind of hunger, not for books, but for human minds. Wait, Susie would really like this book, but it depends. Is her son going to eat like actual human brains, or is it just like a metaphorical like absorption? Because if it's actual human brains, I would love that if her son actually ate human brains. A concept! I mean, if this book has cannibalism in, you know, I've read stories with cannibalism in before. I'm prepared. I'm ready. And then the next book that I'm going to talk about that releases on August 23rd is my most anticipated novel for this year, and that is Babel. 
or the necessity of violence, an arcane history on the Oxford Translators Revolution by RF Kuang. Yes, that is the full title, but I'm fucking excited for this book. This book is literally going to slay me. I love both covers. I will be ordering both of them and trying to collect every single edition because I'm a collector and I like these things, but my god, am I excited for this book. So Babel by RF Kuang is basically a thematic response to the secret history and a tonal response to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. It grapples with student revolutions, colonial resistance, and the use of translation as a tool of empire. And that just sounds fucking amazing. Like, I really love Arif Kwong as an academic as well, because you know that this book is going to sell the, like, dark academia aspects of Babel. And plus, like, the associations that it has with the Tower of Babel as well, being, like, this central hub of language and communication, like, it's just, oh! And yeah, like I mentioned, like, I love that there's going to be more thematic responses to dark academia from the lens of a person of colour, because that's exactly what I'm trying to aim for with the novel that I'm writing. It's something that, like, I'm very excited for as a writer and as a reader, and I just can't wait for Babel to, like, take over and just become such a hit book. Oh, now we get into the last three months, and each of them only have one book in, so we're almost done. Oh my god, we've, we've gone over, like, 19 books so far. In September, which releases on September 6th, we have The Sunbearer Trials by Aidan Thomas, and this is basically Percy Jackson meets The Hunger Games, and this basically follows demigods going into a tournament, and basically the winner is, like, given the greatest honour of all, and the loser is basically sacrificed. As each new decade begins, the sun's power must be replenished so that Sol can keep travelling across the sky and keep the evil obsidian gods at bay. And so, you know, our main protagonist is gonna have a bit of trouble when they're accidentally paired with someone else. Like, they both shouldn't exactly be in the games, but, you know, I think it's gonna be awesome. Like, I loved Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I still need to read Into the Neverwoods. I love Aidan Thomas's writing. We're just gonna have such a fun time with it. I read all of Percy Jackson, like, last year. I love The Hunger Games, and, like, I just love it when people do, like, really cool mesh novels. I just think it's gonna give me that Percy Jackson fix that I need until we get the Nico D'Angelo novel. Then, in October, releasing on October 25th, we have Strike the Zither by Joan Hur. Joan Hur today literally announced the re-release of Descendant of the Crane, which is coming out in paperback, and I love the, the Descendant of the Crane new cover. It's gorgeous. I'm sad that I missed out on, like, the hardcover version of it, but I'm really excited to support Joan in getting the paperback. I'm really excited for Strike the Zither as well, which is basically pitched as a reimagining of the Chinese military epic Romance of the Three Kingdoms, in which a strategist must help her warlordess to victory against the rival kingdoms to the north and the south, while overcoming her fate as written by the gods. Sounds amazing. I just, I love people defining their fates and redefining themselves. Like, I think that's one of the key themes that I love within fiction. We're seeing a running theme through a lot of these books here. I'm kind of imagining, like, a queer thing between, like, the strategist and the warlordess. You yeah, know, we'll see what happens. And I'm planning on reading Romance of the Three Kingdoms as well at some point this year. I'm probably going to be reading the abridged version as opposed to the unabridged. I'm hoping to read that before Strike the Zither comes out, so then I'll have, like, a full knowledge of, like, the entire story and, like, see the connections and stuff and the little references. And then the last book that I'm really anticipating for this year is A Restless Truth by Freya Mask. This one was literally the most recent addition that to this list that I literally did, like, today, because a couple of days ago, I finished A Marvelous Life. I'm going to talk more about this in my January wrap-up because I'm bringing wrap-ups back to the channel. I really liked this book. This book was amazing. And then I immediately went to order the Illumicrate edition that I missed. I really wanted to start collecting these, and I just realised it's got a transparent dust jacket. Like, you can literally see my face through the cover. Hello. This is iconic. I love this. And then this is gorgeous, amazing, stunning. It's such a good book. And I'm really excited for A Restless Truth. It basically follows Robin, the main character of A Marvelous Light, his sister Maud, and it's gonna be sapphic. It feels like it's gonna take place at sea, I think. And it just feels like it's gonna be amazing. And I really just need to read it right away because I wanna find out what happens next. Basically, a Marvelous Light basically follows a gay magician and a gay, like, non-magician as they basically try and figure out a magical conspiracy that could basically undo the way that magicians have their powers. This does have like sex scenes within it that I was not anticipating and then I was in the middle of a tea room and then they started the sex scene and I was like I'm literally sat next to a child. I'm going to have to like shift slightly so that the child doesn't start trying to read this book because you know when people like try and like read your book over your shoulder as you're reading it? I was like, I am not having this. So I had to literally be here in the corner like, because I didn't, I didn't want that to happen. But 
I'm really, really excited for A Restless Truth. The cover was like announced and it looks stunning and amazing. I think it was done by the same cover designer as the first book, so Will Stale. I am just looking forward to it. And basically that now wraps up the 22 books that I'm anticipating for 2022. Literally have such a fantastic reading year ahead. I literally cannot wait to see the plethora of other books that are coming out like This Is Why They Hate Us by Aaron Estevez. We have Cameron Battle and the Hidden Kingdoms by Jamal J. Perry. We have so many other amazing books coming out this year and I know a lot of you are anticipating other books as well. I would like you to leave a comment in the comment section down below detailing what books are you anticipating for 2022. And so yeah, a massive thank you to GlassUSA.com for sponsoring today's video. You can check out the link in my description to go check out the amazing collection of glasses that they offer and find a pair that's right for you. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload next. If you want to check out all my other social medias, they'll be in the description for you as well so you can check me out on every single other platform. And yeah, I'm just really excited to read all of these books this year and just see the amazing stories that they offer and I hope you're excited to see me read them too. And so yeah, I guess until the next time, bye besties.